Hey everyone, and welcome to another weekly art video. I hope you're having an amazing day, and thanks so much for joining me on this one. Today's tutorial is going to be awesome for those of you who are looking to improve your freehand drawing skills, and also your understanding of 3D form and perspective. I'm going to be walking you through drawing three different pieces of fruit freehand, starting out with a preliminary pencil sketch using my envelope method. And then I'm going to walk you through how to add contour lines using pen and ink on these preliminary outline sketches. And the reason why I feel this kind of study is super, super important, when we're just getting started in our drawing journeys, most of us are still seeing things as being flat and two-dimensional. Or maybe we already understand that things around us have 3D form to them and they're not flat and two-dimensional, but they're still showing up as flat and two-dimensional in our drawing. And we have to train ourselves to actually visualize the things around us as having mass, 3D structure, as having form, as being made up of different planes. Three-dimensional form and perspective are directly related. They are both art fundamentals. And these are topics that I would definitely, definitely recommend continuing to come back to and look into if you're just getting started on your art journey and are looking to develop any sense of realism in your work, whether it's mid-levels of realism to higher levels of realism, because no amount of smooth shading techniques are going to help make your drawing or your painting look believable if you haven't yet understood that everything around you is a 3D structure that is made up of different planes. All right, let's move on to the very first study that we're going to be working on. And we're going to start out with the apple. I would consider this one to be the easiest of the three. And this is why I decided to get started with this one. So using my HB pencil, I am using this technique that I have explained about before in past drawing videos. And this is what I like referring to as the envelope method or envelope technique, whatever you'd like referring to it as. But essentially, I am visualizing this apple as being wrapped with wrapping paper. So I'm not really worrying about recreating curves perfectly or getting the shape of the apple right or super perfect right off the bat. Initially, I am just thinking of general angles and proportions and making sure that I am creating this envelope in a good size uh, in relation to my drawing area and also in the location that I want it to be in my drawing area so that I can make sure that it's not too small or too large or too far to the left or too far to the right or whatever the case may be. As you can see, I am continuing to lay down straight lines paying attention to changes in major angles in that apple. And I am left with a somewhat blocky, somewhat geometric-y, angular shape there, as opposed to a curvy shape. I am focusing primarily on proportions. How much of that top rounded out shape am I able to see when I compare it to the lower, more narrow portion? start measuring things out visually and compare and contrast heights and widths and all that, that is going to help you arrive at effective proportions. Is the object that you're seeing symmetrical? Is the left half exactly the same as the right half? Probably not, because in this case, we are sketching out objects that are natural. They're, they are organic. They have a lot of asymmetry and imperfection and irregularity throughout. And I want to make sure that I capture that asymmetry. Oftentimes, when we're getting started with drawing and even with painting, we want to create perfect halves because that is something that is more comfortable for us and our brain finds it more easy, more comfortable. So make sure that you push yourself to capture those irregularities present throughout the edges, throughout the shape, throughout the apple. You can see how I'm continuing to draw very, very lightly. My hand is not placed right next to the tip of my pencil. I know that by uh, really practicing a better drawing grip, which I also talk about in my drawing mini course for the total beginner, by the way, um, I'm going to be able to draw more lightly and have greater control over my drawing tool. 
okay? So I'm continuing to draw very lightly. This is important because drawing is a refinement process. You want to be able to erase along the way and refine as you go, okay? So after laying down my initial blocky shape, I continued comparing and contrasting my sketch with my reference photo, maybe refine some sections a little bit more, and started curving out some sections a little bit more. And once I was happy with that largest general outline shape, I then started adding in the smaller elements and important sections inside of the apple, a little line which is gonna help me um, describe the concave section at the top of the apple and also the little stem. You can also see two slight little lines or curves coming in on either side into the inside of the apple where there is that huge change from a large rounded out section into the lower portion of the apple. And right here, I'm also adding in that large shape for the cast shadow below and to the left of the apple. After this, you're gonna see me also go in into the top part of the stem. I can see that top plane for the stem, the flat plane on top of the stem in that photo. So I go in with my pencil and create a little line for myself so that I can have that visual distinction uh, where I have that major plane change and I can just remember that that is there uh, when I am working with pen and ink. All right, before switching to my pen, I'm gonna take a quick second to gently tap my kneaded eraser over my sketch to lighten it up a little bit more and get rid of any excess graphite that might be floating around on my paper so that I don't smudge everything and start dirtying up my sketch. All right, so the very first thing that I like doing when I'm getting started with this kind of study is I like going over my pencil work, basically tracing over my lines to define the outer edges of my object or my subject and also major lines that I have to make sure to pay attention to that I've already laid down for myself with my pencil. So hopefully you can see how I'm trying to keep my, my wrist and my arm moving as I am drawing those lines tracing over my pencil and I also want you to notice how I am approaching these uh, outer edges as separate lines meaning there are certain little teeny tiny sections throughout those edges in which those lines are not even connecting and I am trying to swiftly keep my uh, my wrist and my arm moving so that I can have at least somewhat of a line weight variation throughout those lines. Essentially, I'm trying to stay away from a very stark, outline-y, coloring book page, uh, thick outline kind of look, because that is gonna lead to a lot of flatness. All right, so now comes the fun part. We're gonna be adding in the contour lines inside of the apple. So to draw contour lines, you really have to pay attention to the three-dimensional structure of whatever it is that you're drawing. Essentially for contour lines, just imagine that this object has rubber bands wrapped all throughout it. And alternatively to this, you can also imagine having drawn thick black lines all around the object using a black sharpie. And those are precisely the lines that you're looking to recreate. Now, you do not by any means have to lay down the exact amount of lines that I am laying down you can create slightly less or you can create slightly more and your contour line sketch is still gonna be great. These are still gonna be contour lines. There is no specific amount of lines that you have to lay down or draw for this to be a contour line sketch. Some artists like using more, some artists like using less. In the first part of this drawing process, when we're creating our preliminary pencil sketch, we're focusing mostly on the outer silhouette of the object or the subject. We're focusing on the outlines, right, on the shape. But now comes a point in which we really have to start acknowledging the 3D form of what we're drawing. Remember that shapes are flat and two-dimensional and forms are three-dimensional and have volume. So initially, in that first part of the drawing process, we are laying down flat shapes and really trying to recreate proportions when we're laying down those shapes. But once those proportions look right and that outer shape looks right, 
it's now time to start describing 3D form. And in order to do this, we really have to observe that object or that subject and acknowledge those curves making up its three-dimensional form and acknowledge the major plane changes throughout that structure. Because essentially what we have to do with the contour lines is we're going to be laying down curves that are going to help us transmit or describe those plane changes. In art, the term plane or planes simply refers to the sides making up that three-dimensional structure. And when you're drawing something like a cube or a rectangular prism or an object like a, a simple table or a desk or a book or a box, okay, all of those things in many ways are more simple to draw because the plane changes are very obvious. They sharply change from one plane into the other plane with much more of an obvious angle because the planes of those structures are flat. Whereas when we're drawing something like an apple or a natural organic uh, object like the one that we're drawing today, the plane changes in these objects that tend to be a lot rounder, they have a lot more curves to them, the plane changes are more subtle. It's like when we're drawing something like a human head or an animal head, right? Those structures are a lot more complex, they have a lot more irregularity to them, and while there may be some flat areas, there's a lot of complexity and irregularity and lots of nooks and crannies, concave areas versus convex areas. And so what I want to push you to do with this one is really take a note of where you see those more flat areas in this apple, where you see more curved areas in this apple, and try to notice where one changes into the other. And then do your best to describe and represent these curves and these changes with lines, just adding curved lines or straighter lines wherever you see them in that photo. Right here I'm getting started with the second layer of lines. So this is already cross contouring. So first I decided to add in the lines that were going in a more vertical position, so to speak. And I am now tackling the lines that would have a more horizontal position going across the apple. As you're working on this cross contour study, don't be overly perfectionistic. Yes, look at that reference photo, acknowledge the three-dimensional structure of what you're trying to draw, really observe those major plane changes, those main curves, how things are going inwards, how things are protruding. But as long as your curves are similar to what you're looking at, you're probably going to be able to transmit that sense of roundness or that 3D-ness that you're trying to convey. Your lines don't have to be perfect and the more you practice, the more quickly you're going to be able to draw these lines and the less mistakes you're going to make. Something that I like bringing to mind that might help you as well is I like thinking of uh, the geography classes or science classes that I took when I was in elementary school and teachers introduced the world globe to us and we learned about the equator and the meridian that are basically dividing the world globe into top and bottom halves and left and right halves right so we have the lines of latitude, which are, they're not parallel to the equator, but they are above and below the equator going in a horizontal direction overall. And then there are the longitude lines like the prime meridian, and those are going from top to bottom. They are vertical lines. And that is essentially what we're laying down here. It's just that because the object that we're drawing is not a sphere and it has so many curves and even flat areas to it and also nooks and crannies like this concave bit at the top, we're not laying down perfect curves, but those lines are really shifting and changing and becoming distorted because of all of this complexity going on throughout this three-dimensional form. One thing that I do want to make sure to say here 
is that you don't have to first do the horizontals and then the verticals. You could approach this the other way around. It's just one of those things in which you have to decide based on what it is that you're drawing, what is gonna make the process easier for you and what's gonna make it so that you have more of a chance of arriving at successful results. Sometimes it's going to vary depending on what it is that you're drawing and you're gonna have to make a choice in terms of what to start with. I finished up by placing my contour lines in the stem. The stem is basically like a little cylinder with an irregular top little bit there. So that's what I had in mind when I was laying down those uh, horizontal contour lines and the vertical contour lines. Okay, moving on to the second sketch that we're going to be working on, and this is the pear. And you can see how both this pear photo as well as the apple photo they were both taken from either slightly above the piece of fruit, and in this case with the pear, even more so. And I chose these reference photos intentionally because this gives us a different perspective from a perfect profile view of the piece of fruit. We're able to see these in a more interesting angle and perspective, and this helps us push our understanding of perspective and the way that we see the subject's overall shape, it really changes and gets even a bit distorted when we're seeing it from different angles and perspectives. Bring to mind how different something like, let's just say, a bottle of wine looks when you are seeing it from a perfect profile view. If the bottle of wine is right at your eye level, Let's just say the bottle is on a shelf, on a tall bookshelf that is directly in front of you and it's at your eye level and you're seeing it from a perfect profile view. If you place that same bottle of wine, let's say on the floor and you are standing right next to it and you're looking down at it, that is going to be a completely different view and perspective of that same object bring to mind how the outer silhouette shape of that object would be different if you were to see it from a perfect profile eye level view versus what that silhouette shape would look like if you were looking at it from way way above it and also realize that what you're able to see of its side planes, its bottom plane, its top plane, it changes depending on where you're seeing that object from and what height you're seeing that object from. And if possible, if you find this kind of visualization exercise difficult, I would highly, highly recommend starting to take your own photos, starting to draw and sketch from direct observation, and really noticing these things in real life. Because no amount of reference photos are going to be able to replace actually observing something in real life and drawing or painting something from direct observation. Even though a photograph is great and provides a lot of visual information on what something looks like in real life, a photograph is still a flat, two-dimensional, mechanical capture of what something looks like in real life from one single point of view, from one single vantage point. Whereas when you're seeing something in real life in front of you, just one slight shift to the left or to the right, or if you even shift in your chair and sit straighter up or hunch down a little bit, you're all of a sudden able to see differences in those shapes and those perspectives. And so I would highly, highly recommend actually exploring all of this in real life and seeing these things because this kind of understanding is really, really going to show in your drawing. All right, you guys, so I'm almost done with my preliminary pencil sketch here. My process was exactly the same as what I did with the apple. I started out with my envelope, noticing major angle changes and laying down straight lines for a blocky kind of angular outer shape. In this case, in my mind, I separated the top part of the pear from the bottom part of the pear. So it's opposite to what was happening with the apple before. With this pear, the upper part is smaller, it's more narrow, 
um, if I visualize the top and the bottom as separate um, spheres or something along those lines, the top sphere-like form would be smaller in diameter than the bottom. And that is opposite to what was happening with the apple. And it's important to train yourself to visually separate uh, whatever it is that you're drawing, even if it's just one subject or object, into different parts, separate parts, right? Making up the whole. Because getting proportions right is really all about comparing those different parts making up the whole in terms of height, width, and all that stuff. Of course, when you have multiple objects in a still life arrangement that you're drawing, or even if it's a portrait, you know, there are different facial elements uh, making up the face. And then there's the face shape or head shape. You're comparing all of these separate elements with each other and their relationship, getting that relationship between the different elements or parts right, that is what is going to help you recreate those proportions effectively. And so that is exactly what I am doing when I am sketching these objects out. I'm visually separating it into parts and then comparing those parts with each other in terms of their size and their location in space and the angles created and all of that. And the more you practice that, the easier it becomes for you to freehand sketch pretty much anything with relatively believable proportions. Once I had my initial envelope laid down, I then compared my sketch to the photo. I did any refinements that needed to get done if I needed to make certain uh, a certain part a little bit larger, a little bit smaller. If I had to move a certain section a little bit more to the left or to the right, I turned some of my straighter lines into more curve-like lines. And then once my larger general shape was created, I then moved on to adding in the smaller elements and details, which in this case was the stem. And I also added in the cast shadow shape. So once I was happy with that, with that preliminary pencil sketch, I then moved on to working with my pen and ink. And I'm approaching this in the exact same way that I did the apple. I started by defining the outer edges of the object here. And you can see how, again, I made sure not to create one consistent line weight and line all throughout the outer edge of the pair. I approached it more so in sections. So you can see little tiny sections where those lines are not even connected. What I am doing now after having defined those outer edges is I am working on the horizontal contour line. So again, in this case, I started with the horizontal ones and I'll be adding the vertical contour lines after I've done the horizontal ones. So what I'm doing here is I am observing that reference photo and I'm really trying to notice sections where I see curves throughout that structure of that pair. But I'm also noticing sections in that pair where I see uh, flatter sections. And I am doing my best to represent these curves, these nooks, these crannies, these flat areas with curved lines or straighter looking lines. Now, remember, there is no need to be super precise or be too much of a perfectionist about this process. As long as you're laying down those lines approximately in the correct area where you see those plane changes, where you see those curves, where you see those flatter sections in the pair, etc., and you're doing your best to recreate those curves or those flatter sections with your lines, your pair is going to look like a pair. And that's what's cool about doing these studies initially with something like pieces of fruit, organic objects, like the ones that we're working on today, because there is so much imperfection and irregularity in a piece of fruit. They're not going to be symmetrical, they're not gonna be perfect, and they are never exactly the same. And so if you have subtle the areas that look a little bit different from the photo, it's not really gonna be that big of a deal. Just keep going. 
Something that I would love for you to notice is how even the less curved line sections that I am laying down, the straighter sections of these lines that I'm creating, they're not perfect, super straight, stiff lines. And I am doing this intentionally because I know that by creating very stiff, straight, perfect looking lines, that is going to likely take away from the organic, irregular look of this particular structure. And this goes even for just sections of that longer line that does have curves uh, throughout it. So even if a specific section of that longer line is very straight and very perfect, that's likely going to take away from that organic irregular structure. Okay, so right here I'm working on the stem and the stem, it's just a little cylinder. So I'm just imagining the curvature of that cylinder. I lay down the horizontals along that tiny cylinder and then I lay down the verticals. Right here I'm just adding a few more lines. And as I said before, you do not have to create as many lines as I did. You can create a fewer amount, you can create a bit more. There is no exact number of lines that you have to lay down for this to be a contour sketch or a contour study. All right, you guys, we are down to our very last contour line sketch. And as I said, I've saved the hardest one, or at least this is the hardest one in my opinion, for last. So we're moving on to the only vegetable that I've added in here. This is not really a piece of fruit, uh, but the things apply that I was sharing with the last two. So there's still a lot of irregularity, a lot of asymmetry, and imperfection involved. And my process is exactly the same. So you can see me working on my initial blocky envelope. I'm noticing the overall general outer shape created by this vegetable. And I am just laying down straight lines, really noticing where angles change and just focusing on recreating effective proportions. So in this case, this pepper is kind of laying down on its side, right? So I am kind of visually comparing its total width to its height so that I can uh, get the proportions down for this pepper as best as I can. And I continued comparing my envelope shape to what I was seeing in the photo. And a moment ago, I actually brought in that width a little bit because I was noticing that the envelope was a little bit too wide. And so I fixed that. And once I was happy with that largest envelope shape, what I am doing now is I am breaking up this larger shape into smaller shapes. So for peppers, this kind of pepper has kind of sections throughout it. And that is what's going to make this particular uh, subject or object a little bit more difficult and complex than the apple and the pear because we have these separate curved sections. And as we're laying down those contour lines, we really have to pay attention to how they curve. And these curved sections of the pepper, they're not the same. Some of them might be more narrow, some of them are larger than others, and they have irregularities throughout them as well. And we have to pay attention to those nooks and crannies and smaller curves and things like that when we are laying down those lines. For something like this, I like actually counting how many of these individual uh, smaller sections am I able to see for this pepper in this photo from this perspective. Even if I'm just able to see a tiny bit of that one section, I count it. And so I count them and I make sure that I'm making that amount of sections happen in my sketch. And then I compare these separate sections to each other in, in terms of width, in terms of height, in terms of the angles that they create, how much uh, separate sections taper at the end. I'm constantly comparing my sketch to the reference photo and at this point I am really focusing on refining things, uh, making blocky angular lines look a little bit more curved and so on and so forth. So as you can tell, my method with all of these objects that I have been drawing so far is going from general largest shapes 
and making my way towards specifics and simplifying, simplifying, simplifying. So when we're just getting started in our drawing journeys, we get very easily overwhelmed with the detail and the smaller things. And honestly, we shouldn't even be paying attention to those things in the beginning because we have to lay down that foundation. We have to make sure that shapes, proportions, and even perspectives look good before moving on to the smaller things. And with enough practice, you train yourself to tune out all of the things that don't matter as you're building up that sketch from scratch and things are not as overwhelming anymore. And you build up your observational skills, your visual measuring skills, and all of these things which are going to allow you to draw and sketch pretty much anything you want. All right, so once that larger body of this pepper had been sketched in, I then moved on to adding in the stem. The stem for this object is pretty big compared to the pear and the apple. So what I did was I created a couple of little tick marks for myself and you can still see the horizontal tick mark that I lay down for myself right there at the end of the stem. So I really focused on the angles created by the stem in the photo and in order to make sure that it was an approximate length similar to the one that I see in the photo, I created that little tick mark for myself taking into account how much farther up or how much farther above that end of that stem is when I compare it to the edge of the body of the pepper. You can always help yourself with tick marks or with straight horizontal or vertical lines along the way so that you can compare alignments and locations of different elements or parts in relation to each other. All right, so one other thing that makes this one slightly more challenging than the previous two is the fact that this one actually includes the, um, the block or surface that this object is on. So I am visualizing this concrete, I guess, it's concrete block that this pepper is on as a rectangular prism. And as I mentioned, when I was working on, I think it was the first sketch, Blocky objects like this concrete block are easier to visualize because it's just a rectangular prism. It's made up of flat planes and very obvious clean angles. And yes, there are certain irregularities and imperfections and even um, curvy edges in this particular block. However, I am tuning them out initially and I am focusing on creating a uh, more perfect, I guess you could say, rectangular prism because this is important. It's important to understand first and foremost, what's the top plane, what's the front plane, if you're able to see any bits of the side planes of this block. And then once the perspective of that block is right, then if you'd like to add in the cracks and the worn edges or whatever it is, then you can make them happen. But when it's something like a block or a rectangular prism like uh, object, first acknowledge the perspective. Notice how I made that, uh, it's called I think a parallelogram for that top plane because I have two horizontal lines, straight horizontal lines, and then two slanted lines that create a parallelogram. Because of the perspective that I'm seeing this concrete block from, I see a parallelogram for that top plane. I made that happen by really acknowledging the angles for those lines that I see, and then I just pull down straight vertical lines along the bottom corners there and then one on the upper right corner to turn it into a rectangular prism. But it is super, super essential to tune out those cracks, those irregularities, those curves present in that rectangular uh, prism, in that block, in that photo until you get that perspective right until you understand how much of the top plane, front plane, and visible side planes you're able to see. And then if you'd really like to push for more likeness to that block that you see in the photo, 
then go ahead. But that perspective and that 3D form for that rectangular prism is first and foremost. All right, so once I was happy with my preliminary pencil sketch, I am using the exact same method and strategy that I have been using for my other sketches. Initially, I went in to trace over the edges. I approached tracing the edges as separate uh, line section so you can see how some of those lines are not even really touching or connecting in certain parts and what I am doing now are the, they would be the horizontal lines but since this pepper is uh, kind of laying down sideways we actually see these as verticals <laughs> in this case and as I am drawing these lines I am paying attention to the curves that I'm able to perceive in these curved sections of the pepper in that photo. And in this one, I do lay down a line that I didn't really end up liking very much. I accidentally curved it a little bit too much. And I actually left the footage where I am using just a teeny tiny bit of whiteout to fix that little section of that line. And then I come back with my pen and just um, correct that line a little bit. It's a little line that I'm going to be laying down in the top section next to the stem. It's right around here that I am going to be drawing it. This line right here. There you go. So that very curved line that I brought in and made way too much of a pronounced curve, it doesn't really go hand in hand, I feel, with the structure of that section of the pepper that I'm seeing in the photo. I feel it's important for me to leave these mistakes in the tutorial and actually share them with you because it's not the end of the world when you make a mistake like this. You know, you already pushed yourself with everything else in the study and you have done a lot of things correctly. So instead of uh, thinking that you completely ruined everything and that you have to restart or whatever the case may be, acknowledge everything you've already done correctly and everything that you've managed to practice. And this goes for anything art related that you may choose to work on. Always acknowledge the things that you did well and the things that could be improved a little bit more. And really just the fact that you sat yourself down and completed a study from start to finish is a huge success in and of itself. All right, so instead of going crazy with that little line that I didn't like, I continued working on my sketch. I continued adding all of my contour lines. I just left it and I knew that later on, once I finished with everything else, I would be reaching for my whiteout and I would be just removing a teeny tiny section of that line and I just redraw that little section. So I'm finishing up with the stem for this pepper and again, I am visualizing the stem as being cylindrical. Yes, it's bending, um, it's kind of twisting or receding slightly away from us, but it's a cylinder, right? I'm visualizing it as a kind of flexible cylinder, right? And so it's important to create a curve in those lines because the cylinder has curves to it. And I started by laying down the lines that would be horizontal if this pepper was upright. And then once those horizontal lines were in, I then laid down what would be the vertical lines if this pepper was upright. And now I'm just finishing up by tracing the edges of this rectangular prism. I'm then going to be tracing over the cast shadow shape that I had laid down with graphite. And with this particular one, because it's way more complex and has more parts to it than the previous ones, I'm going to go in with a second layer along some of those shape edges. And really less is more when you do this kind of thing. I'm just going over certain sections of these edges to add a little bit more definition and contrast so that things pop out a little bit more and certain important forms don't get lost. So I'm going over certain sections of lines that I initially created for myself during that preliminary uh, pencil sketch process, not over the contour lines. And I'm doing this very minimally and very loosely. 
All right, so I'm just finishing up with the final detailing here, going over certain edges to add a little bit more definition. And I am almost done here, and then I'm going to show you what I do with my whiteout. Which, by the way, I'm going to go in with a whiteout pen, not with uh, the type that come with a little brush or anything like that. And I'm just going to erase a teeny tiny little section of the line. When you're going to be doing any erasing like that, you want it to be super, super minimal. Otherwise, you can really end up making the situation even worse. Okay, just finishing up here, and I am about to grab my whiteout, and here I go. So there's this teeny tiny little section of a line here that I didn't like. It's very curved. I'm just placing a little teeny tiny bit of whiteout there. I am going to allow everything to dry completely because if I were to go over wet whiteout with my drawing pen, I could risk damaging the tip and I don't want that to happen. So I made sure that everything was completely dry and then I just completed that little teeny tiny section of the line that I erased out. Did you enjoy this tutorial? I really, really hope you did and if so, Make sure to check out everything that I am offering over at my Patreon membership website because for a very small amount a month, you're going to get immediate access to my exclusive tutorials, classes, and resources that I don't share anywhere else. All of these exclusive tutorials include my downloadable outline sketches so that you don't have to start from scratch, reference photos, and my supply lists. There's already a library of over 75 sketching and watercolor painting tutorials that are real time, meaning they are not sped up or edited. They are fully narrated and I take you through my entire process, making sure to explain everything as clearly as possible step by step. Two new exclusive full length tutorials are added into this exclusive library every single month. For those of you who are interested in really taking your artwork to the next level and want to know all of the inside secrets that I learned about in art school and courses that I've invested in myself, there's also a full library on classes on art fundamentals in which all of the bases are covered. That library has now over 35 classes and workshops all have assignments at the end that help you actually put your knowledge to the test. And there's a brand new class or workshop added at the beginning of every single month. As if all of this weren't enough, you also get a weekly sketchbook prompt sent to your inbox to help you stay consistent with your art practice. There's a live training, workshop, or paint along session with me every single month. Members in the $15 tier and upwards get access to thorough feedback from me on their work whenever they need it, and much, much more. There are different tiers that you can join that give you access to different things, which you can choose from depending on your goals and needs needs. So go ahead and check it out. I'm going to make sure to leave a link where you can find out more down below in the description box of this video. And I would love, love, love to get to know more about you and your work and have you join this innermost art community of mine. All right, you guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.